So yeah, we're starting off with Victory Road for the Victor your countdown to Victory Road. It is the pre-show. We, there was two matches announced for it. Um, we had Tasha Steeles versus Killer Kelly, um, which I was kind of surprised that they threw on there. Uh, and then the match that definitely screamed kickoff match. Yeah, uh, Bullet Club versus all the gut check winners. Yeah. So we had rock hard juice robinson which they didn't announce him as rock hard juice robinson which pissed me off but uh, they um matthew rainwald did say the juice is loose he did he did um so you got uh juice robinson ace austin and chris bay versus the gut check winners of this year um and the gut check winner from 2020 shogun um, it was, I, I forget the other member, it was ja- Jackson Hodge, I think. Um, and, um, I forget the other guy because they, they really, I, I, think I was a just, co-winner last year or yes. something like that. Yeah. I was just so focused on Shogun because he just, it, so it was Jack Price, Jason Hodge, Hodge, not, uh, not Jackson or J- Jackson Hotch, uh, and Shogun Jackson Stone. So there, there's there's the three people. Uh, Bull Club win in basically a squash. Uh, Jackson, uh, Jason Hotch got some spots in. Uh, Shogun was there, um, looking totally different than everybody else. Um, and Jack Price ate the pin uh, and everybody's finishers. Uh, so yeah. Um, but it got the crowd going because Bolt Club. Yeah, exactly. So Juice, is he like really still involved with Bolt Club? Stuff? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. He's, uh, I mean, at least through the G1 he was, uh, and okay. then, uh, I, I guess he's back in America for a bit. Um, cool. cause there, there's not really any major stuff going on for, for him, I guess. Uh, cause they're kind of in between big things. Um, and yeah, uh, I'd assume he, he'll be back in Japan sooner rather than later, but who knows? There's, there's so many people in Bullet Club, Juice could be back in the U.S. for like a month and they wouldn't miss him. Right, right. Um, the other match, Tasha Steeles versus Killer Kelly. Um, so this was a fine match, but the ending was absolutely bizarre oh yeah i'm just like i was like trying to think about it i'm like yeah that was bizarre um, so uh tasha steels comes out uh savannah is back so she's not really disappeared she, they, they must have they must have found her in in that one day that she disappeared 24 hours yeah <laughs> yeah um so Killer Kelly, if she is a serial slash horror killer person, person, she's not doing a good job if she's taking people away. And yeah, well, so I mean, overall, this match, like, there was like an actual back and forth. Tasha Steele yes. like, had some offense, and not just like, you know, like squash build up. Like this, this was a match. Killer Kelly's, you know, at the same level as Tasha. You know, kind of basically, like she's definitely like going to be you know presented in a better way in the coming months but like they, they held their own against each other um and then whatever this finish was ryan you yeah get... so savannah evans gets on the ring side or, or gets on the apron because she realizes killer kelly's about to make uh they're about to lock in the killer clutch on savannah or not on savannah on tasha uh savannah has a chain uh killer kelly notices it knocks uh, Savannah off the apron, but grabs the chain uh, and goes to choke uh, Tasha with the chain. The ref sees this and goes to throw the match out. 
but as he's about to do it, Killer Kelly locks on the killer clutch on him with the chain and makes him tap out. And he does she doesn't break it. And out comes some more refs. Out comes Lance Storm. And out comes Tommy Dreamer. Uh, who they do acknowledge. They do say Tommy Dreamer and Lance Storm are here to try to get her off. Um, yeah, I mean, they're trying to write Tommy Dreamer back on TV. Oh, absolutely. This is what they're doing. They're, yeah. they're planting the seeds. Yeah. Hey, man, we did say he was going to appear on Victory Road. We just thought he was going to be in a match. Randomly. Yeah, true. <laughs> we thought he was going to be in a random hardcore, uh, yeah. old school rules match. Right, and he didn't even cry. No, that's a damn travesty. Yeah, he didn't cut a promo. For? Right. He, what are you he, for? he didn't have his triple braided hair. He didn't have well, the we know he's going to cry bound for glory. Oh, yeah, absolutely. When, uh, when, you know, the new Hall of Fame inductee, Raven. Oh, he has to be the one inducting Raven. Oh, in. No doubt. That's why they brought him back. That is 100% why Tommy Dreamer is back. <laughs> and then when, he, he's just going to cry the entire time. No doubt. Oh, it's going to be great. Um, yeah, so the match is thrown out, uh, is ruled a disqualification, and Tasha Steeles has picked up the first victory over Killer Kelly by technicality. I think this just shows that Killer Kelly is crazy, um, but I don't know what this is. Do- I it's going to prolong the feud for two more weeks. I guess this is gonna yeah, be a yeah, for glory it's match. definitely that. It's definitely a bound for glory match then, which is fine. I think yeah. that makes sense. Hopefully that they do better than the pre-show then for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and hey, this reminds me of uh, when when I was a young youngin watching uh, SmackDown in like the mid two thousands and Finley. He was already, you know, a well-known wrestler from WCW, but he made his, like, WWE debut. Yeah. I forget who he went against. Was it Rey Mysterio or someone? But he, he gets the victory. It might have been actually a jobber. He gets the victory and is doing fine, but then he just starts beating the hell out of this jobber or whoever with the shillelagh, like, over and over again. The ref reverses the decision. Like, like please stop. So he ended up losing the match. So, like, in a similar manner, like Killer Kelly. Can't control the person. I like it. Well, it's because he loves to fuck. I mean, fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Uh, after this, we go to our main show, uh, and we are kicking it off with X Division title match between Delirious and Mike Bailey. Um, so commentary points out that Mike Bailey is closing in on Christopher Daniels' record for most offenses. Um, and commentary i was very confused by it because commentary said something and it sounded like they were trying to the way that they phrased it were combining all the different reigns that christopher daniels had yeah which they're like oh this is what he's at and this is what mike bailey's at and mike bailey's done it in less than 100 days and christopher daniels did in almost 200 and i was like oh okay so we're He's about to pass the most combined reigns, and it's going to be in one reign. That's incredible. Um, so did some digging. Uh, it, it, his his one reign counts more than he most other people because Impact recognizes his defenses in Pro Wrestling Gorilla, where he defended it like three times in a weekend, oh. uh, which gave him 13. Mike Bailey's defenses in Wrestling Revolver and I think one in GCW maybe or uh, AAW like the that Chicago place that they had the title match of the other day or the other week Mm -hmm. um, those are not being counted for Mike Bailey but they're sanctioning them it's very weird yeah. Oh. Wow. Um. But yeah. So Mike Bailey, this is this is if he defeats Delirious, would be his ninth defense, not his he, instead of what really would be his eleventh successful defense. Right. Right. Okay. Um. I thought this was a pretty good match. I've never seen a Delirious match in my life. Yeah, I, I can I've think. Not either. I think he's he's the trainer, or used to be the head trainer at Ring of Honor. Yeah, and he was also yeah. the Booker for a while as well. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he was the booker. I mean, Jigsaw was the trainer. I forget. Or maybe he, he he, I think he did both. Okay. He was, he was like a thing of a little bit of everything. Yeah, he definitely was one of the trainers because uh, if it was, I'm trying to think, one of the last shows that they did, 
um, that Ring of Honor did Delirious Face Cheeseburger and oh. Delirious gifted Cheeseburger's mask afterwards to like pass it down because Cheeseburger is now like a trainer basically. Um, hmm. And Delirious trained him in the ROH do- dojo. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, cool. yeah. So I think he, he did like a little bit of booking, a lot of bit of training. Um, but it definitely shows that he's really good. I thought this was a really good match. Um, I, again, not familiar with much of his work other than that he existed in, in Ring of Honor um, and that he has a mask and a beard. That's the only things I knew about Delirious. Oh, and yeah, he was a very hyper local talent. Yes. And, and that he, uh, dates or is married to Mandy Leone of Ring of Honor. Those are the only things I know about Delirious. Um, but yeah, this was a really good match. I'm just, for somebody who doesn't wrestle too often, pretty good. Um, he really worked on uh, Mike Bailey's back and neck throughout this match. Just really stiff strikes, really hard hitting stuff. Um, he, he hit, I believe, his finisher. At least Impact tried to make it like it was his finisher. I don't know if it's actually his finisher. Um, I'm trying to bring bring up the name of it real quick because they they po- uh, said it and I had it written down, but I think I spelt it wrong. Um, it is uh, the smoke of the no something something of it, it was something, but it's just like a diving move onto somebody's back, and it looks extremely painful. Um, it looked like Ultimo Weapon, but so much further. Uh, Shadows over hell. That's what it is. Uh-huh. I had smoke over the water. Um, <laughs> smoke on smoke yeah. on the water. Yeah, but no, it's sh- Shadows over hell. They've sold this like this is a move that nobody kicks out of. Um, and he kicked out of it. They continued for a while. He uh, Mike Bailey went for Ultimo Weapon. Uh, Delirious countered it. Uh, they had this really hard kicking exchange. Mike Bailey delivers a basically of Delirious who just folds. Uh, and he sells this like death. Like, it, it was a really good sell. Um, and Mike Bailey would get back in control. He would set up for the Flamingo Driver and pick up the win. And he is now at nine defenses, successful defenses on Impact Television. Yeah, it's pretty big. And so now he's got to sit back tight and see who his Bound for Glory opponent's going to be. Yeah. Um, after this, commentary announces that there's an auction going on on eBay for Joe Doring uh, and his battle uh, with cancer. And all of the proceeds are going directly to Joe Doring and his fight for can- uh, fight against cancer. Um, after this, we get an honor no more promo, uh, about how, uh, Maria says that everybody, this is a big night for them. Um, Kenny's going to get them gold, uh, in the X division or get set up a, a match for the X division title at, uh, bound for glory. Eddie's going to win the title at bound for glory. Uh, OG kingdom are going to, OG K are going to retain their titles at bound for glory. Eddie and uh, OGK are going to win tonight against Josh, Heath, and Rich. And Vincent and uh, PCO are going to beat the number one contenders for the OGK's tag titles at Bound for Glory in Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, Vincent starts cutting a promo. PCO starts growling randomly, and Eddie just snaps on PCO. Uh, talking about how he doesn't trust him. He, he didn't listen to him la- yesterday, so why should he even get a match today? And Vincent just pulls out an executioner's hood and puts it over uh, PCO's face and says, hey, man, he, he's got to prove that we're, we're good today. All right, we're, we're going to prove that today. Dig what I'm saying, man? Got to throw that in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this would take us to Vincent and PCO versus the Mercy Machine Guns. Um, this was a match that existed. Uh, considering the Mercy Machine Guns, I was expecting 
Yeah, I mean, you're expecting flawless tag team wrestling from them. I thought they looked really good. PCO and Vincent, I do not understand what the, what was going on in this because the whole thing was that Vincent is supposed to be able to talk to PCO, but they, his commentary says they don't talk in human ways, and I'm very confused on what that meant. Um, but there was just a lot of miscommunication here between them uh they they were bumping into each other at points uh accidentally hitting each other with their moves trying pco tried to tag vincent in at one point but vincent wouldn't accept it until pco was like standing in the ring right in front of him so that he could slide around him instead of having to wait for him to move It, it was weird um pco attempted to kill himself again uh, by just yeah. diving at nobody uh, and hitting the ra- the ramp, <laughs> just like uh, back, like back square against the floor there. Yeah, just what what a day for for this man. Yeah, twenty four hours. Yeah, uh, Vincent and PCO do not pick up the win. Vincent did hit his finisher red rum, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, Motor City Machine Guns got out of that. Uh, and yeah, Motor City Machine Guns win. Uh, and commentary points out he's going to have to have big talking to to Vincent and PCO about this. Giselle Shaw versus Mickey James. Um, again, we, we've been hypercritical of Mickey James in her previous run with Impact that she her matches just did not live up to what the standard of Mickey James matches were. This blew every single match that she had in this previous run out of the water. This oh, yeah, was a fantastic match. Yeah, maybe that's uh, more on Giselle. Yeah. Um, this was just... This was easily Giselle's best match that she's had in Impact. Um, but Mickey looked great. Giselle looked, yeah, Giselle looked great in this. Um, it just felt really, really strong. Uh, the chemistry was just there for almost this entire thing. Um, and he, they really sold it like you either person could win this match, um, which I think is what you, you have to do in these, like, the next time I lose, I'm retiring, or the next time we lose, we're breaking up. Right. Um, like, you've got to make sure that, like, there's some sort of, like risk for them like if it's just like i'm um, blowing through everybody like not yeah, gonna no be fun. realistic but like that this made it feel like okay well make everybody on the knockouts roster at this point could be a threat to, to end mickey's career um which i think is really strong booking for the knockouts division as a whole uh, but also makes mickey look stronger as well that she's able to beat them um and hang with them so um i think the biggest or the in my opinion the best spot of this match um giselle um went for her die her so she normally goes with a corkscrew move uh, out of the corner uh, as one of her finishers this time she went with a diving kick that corkscrew kick onto the outside and it landed pretty flush with Mickey uh, in her face. I thought it was like a botch originally, but like they showed it back and they they clearly, she like moved that it out to be like a kick. Um, It was really impressive. Like Mm -hmm. so much could have gone wrong with the move and it didn't. And it looked really good. Um, What didn't look good was the ending of this match. Uh, Mickey goes for the Mick kick and just it's miles off it did not look anywhere close to being close to hitting any part of giselle's body um and then she lines her up for the mick ddt picks up the win um and yeah the overall i'd say a really good match spotty ending but it can be forgiven because the match was really good yeah agreed um this would take us to our next match um and our next match would be our triple threat revolver match between 
Yuya Yamura, Trey Miguel, Mia Yim, Laredo Kid, Kenny King, Black Trues, Alex Zane, and Frankie Kazarian. Um, we start off the match with Mia Yim, uh, Laredo Kid, and Trey Miguel uh, to kick off the match. Uh, and the rules are simple. It's a triple threat match. Anything goes, basically. But uh, it's an elimination match. So if you get eliminated, you're out. And the next That's person the next will come in. Then. Until uh, the last three. And then yes. First pinfall wins. Yes. Um, so uh, I thought this was a, an interesting triple threat people. Um, Trey, uh, I figured, was going... I personally thought Trey was not going to last super long in this match just because he's already had the X Division title yeah. this year and he already had an uh, X Division title match. Um, that was not the case. He was he felt like the Iron Man in this match for most of it. Um, Mia Yim uh, looked extremely strong throughout this match, picking up a few eliminations, yeah, uh, including the first Laredo elimination. Kid. Yeah, she eliminates Laredo Kid, uh, and that would bring out uh, Alex Zane who Mia Yim would also eliminate. Um, so picking up two eliminations pretty quickly. Uh, and then out comes Kenny King. Uh, and this is where things got a bit weird. Um, Kenny King was... He, he was looked good, but he like whenever he would attack Mia, he'd make these very loud yells. Like cackles. Yeah. yeah, and then he put Mia in the corner and was like punching her and kicking her and stuff. And he just started losing his shit. Uh, I was very confused about this. We all were. I uh, was Pat. Pat. Pat questioned if this was his new gimmick, and <laughs> I was like, "No, <laughs> I've never seen Kenny King do this in my life." Um, he he was very. He thought that uh, Mia Yim should eliminate Kenny King. Well, Impact thought differently. Kenny King eliminates Mia Yim. Um, crowd very against this. Uh, Makes probably sense. the loudest booze of the night for anybody um yeah, out comes the heat magnet yeah out comes yuya yuya yamora uh who comes in gets to the top rope immediately hits a uh, meteor drop kick right to trey miguel's face yeah a beautiful <laughs> drop kick dude he's so good i fucking love yamora uh, and again, Yamora, 27 years old. He looks like he, he, he is the real deal. I think it, New Japan have a super big talent there um, with this guy. Uh, however, Impact didn't need, didn't need him as much. Uh, he's, he's not in there for much uh, time. He gets eliminated. Out comes uh, Frankie Kazarian. Um, Frankie Kazarian would eliminate uh, Trey uh, and that would bring out Black Tarus and I thought Black Tarus was going to pick up a win I really did that would that have been was, hard though coming off you know, the win yesterday yeah. um, I just didn't think the, the person who won was going to pick up a win I was very shocked but I'm yeah, not I, at upset that point, about it I, when it was them three left I thought like okay Kenny King's gonna get it. This is a Bound for Glory match, like kind of rubber match there. Yeah, but no, we got Frankie Kazarian uh, pinning Kenny King to now become the number one contender. And it's very surprising. Yeah, and I'm not against it. No, no, uh, definitely not against it. It was just like it shocks me. Yeah, just with the talent on the X Division roster, and I mean, I, I guess you know it's only a two week build. And it's a good on paper matchup, you know, Kazarian versus Mike Bailey, old versus new. Um, yeah, Kazarian uh, trying to save his his old tag team partner's record. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's trying to mean. preserve it. Exactly. Maybe Christopher Daniels will be next. Yeah. Hey, man, I still think that if if Impact is smart, if they if the thing is they want Mike Bailey to hold it for longer or have more defenses. I think number 14 should be Christopher Daniels. I mean, that would be awesome. Since yeah. He's still active wrestling, like, might as well yeah. I, I just think that, that that's just a really cool passing of the torch moment for the X division uh, of like the old guy, the old guard of the X division trying to defend his, his, uh, his record. The new guy gets it and it's a big, big win. 
and I'm sure it would be a great match because Mike Bailey's great, and Christopher Daniels shows that he can still go every time he's in the ring. Oh, absolutely. Uh, after this, we get Honor No More versus Heath, Rich Swan, and Josh Alexander. Um, this is not what I expected from this match. Um, I thought this match, for some reason, I just assumed because it was an Honor No More multi-man match that this was a no DQ match. Ah. <laughs> and it wasn't. And I was like, why are people following the rules of this yeah, match yeah, the no, entire time? Rio's match. Yeah. And I, uh, like m- pretty pretty early on, I was just like, this is weird. Why <laughs> why is there not shenanigans nonstop? Um then 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 it dawned on me on what the what the rules actually were. Yes. And I was like, oh okay, this makes a little more sense. Um but yeah. Um I was shocked at the ending of this match. I figured Honor No More was gonna win. Uh just to make them look a little strong going into Bound for Glory. But yeah, Eddie Edwards getting a Boston knee party and getting the win on Josh Alexander. <laughs> yeah, he's pinning Josh Alexander clean was bizarre. Yeah. I did Albeit not Josh see Alexander that. was like in the middle of, you know, trying to get uh Matt Taven to tap, I guess, to the ankle off. Yes. Well, he, wasn't even, he wasn't even the uh active Yes. Person yeah, he wasn't the legal man. No. He wasn't the legal man, but he was he was in the middle of an ankle lock and then got hit from the side of the Boston knee party. So Yeah. Um, very shocking stuff. I I can't remember the last time I saw Josh Alexander get pimp. Yeah, it's really been a while. Yeah, uh, I I feel like it's got to be Bound for Glory last year with Moose. Literally Moose, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I can't think of any time else that he's been pimped. Um, after this, uh, we got the announcement for Raven being into the Hall of Fame. Um, cool stuff. Um, I yeah, honestly did a lot thought, with the, you know, the early N- NWA TNA day. Yes, so he's definitely deserving just based on that. Yeah, I honestly thought he was already in the Hall of Fame. The um, Hall of Fame is pretty small. Yeah, in fact, they they've literally done like once one a year for only a few years, I think. Yeah. Um, this will take us to our next match. It is Jordan Grace versus Max the Impaler with Father James Mitchell at ringside. And this is, again, Max the Impaler was Masha Slamovich's hand-picked opponent for Jordan Grace for Pick Your Poison. And its commentary says uh, every Pick Your Poison match ends up, it goes both ways. Your opponent also gets to choose an opponent for you. Um, but Jordan Grace hadn't made the announcement on who the opponent was going to be. Um, this was a very long match, but I thought it was a very strong match. Um, both people uh, looked really, really strong in this. Uh, Max looked like she was really bringing the heat um, on uh, on Jordan. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, really cool spot. Max did like uh, I, I think it was like a backbreaker right onto the the apron, um, which did get Jim to shout out. You can't fake that shit. Um, <laughs> which yeah, yeah, fair. yeah that's fair um and yeah i thought that that was a really cool spot uh i i was very confused father james mitchell like numerous times kept on getting onto the ring apron and then like pulling himself down before anything happened <laughs> i was very confused about it i was like is this like a 2k glitch where like Somebody just gets on the apron to try to distract somebody, and then like it does absolutely nothing. That's what it felt like. No problem. Um, but yeah, Max looked really good. Jordan looked really strong. The fact that Jordan was able to counter mo- a lot of Max's stuff, stay with it, and pick up the win uh, looked good. Jordan gets the win. Crowd was very loud for this. Um, and then Jordan got a mic. Uh, Jordan said that Masha chose a very good opponent, very strong opponent. Um, but as Masha is learning and as everybody else is learning, Jordan doesn't go down without a fight. Uh, and that's how she picked up her win tonight. Um, and then he pointed out, or then she pointed out that, yeah, 
Uh, she gets to choose a pick your poison match for uh, uh, for Masha, and she is going to choose or she chose a friend of hers who is as dangerous, as sadistic, uh, as morally questionable as uh, Masha, and she has chosen Alley Catch of GCW, but not just in a regular match. It is a Monsters Ball match at uh, on Impact next week. Um, yeah, that should be that should be very exciting. Yeah, um, haven't seen too much of Alley Catch uh, other than like the few GCW matches I've seen of her, um, but this should be brutal. Um, yeah, it really just depends how much they present, how they present her. Especially, she's not like a signed Impact wrestler, not very, very known on a national scale. So, yeah, it's got to be. I mean, they've clearly got some, like they're not gonna throw a random person that they don't trust to have a, a decently long match with. Right, they're not gonna in have a monsters ball match. match. Yeah, ball, I would think. Yeah, that would be very weird. Um, but uh, it will be interesting to see if we get like a different presentation of Masha. Do we get like the independent scene Masha of her being what, like? What if, what if Jordan was like my friend ODB <laughs> is gonna beat you in a Masha's ball match? Now that so, would be so I'm I'm not gonna lie. I thought she was going to say Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly thought. It was gonna be like jazz or havoc. That like it would have almost made sense. Jazz would have been kind of funny. <laughs> ODB would have been better. Yeah, ODB <laughs> was like this is perfect, and then she's gonna get squashed by Masha. <laughs> My friend, Madison Rain. Oh no, she's back. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. Uh. Uh, after uh, also my friend then... <laughs> Lacey Von Eric, <laughs> my friend Jenna Maraska. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> the crowd, you know, my friend Taylor Wild. Yeah, and the crowd goes mild. <laughs> She's back. She's back <laughs> after another year's long absence. <laughs> <laughs> She's been training for Monsters Ball for a year. No, just no food, no water, no sunlight. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just the skeleton now, <laughs> the corpse. I, I book it. Yeah. Uh, we also had a uh, backstage segment somewhere on this. I don't remember where between Chelsea, Deanna, Jessica, Rosemary, Taya, and Gail Kim. Um, Bound for Glory. It will be. Vexed defending their tag titles uh, against, I guess, Jessica and Taya with Rosemary at ringside, it seems. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like, which is that's that's cool. Um, yeah, yeah, should be good. It'll be, should a- be a good matchup. I don't, you know, I we get speculated on it on another episode, but I, I don't imagine right now that Vex lose the titles here. Yeah, I, I feel like that'd be very weird. Um, to give them the title and immediately have them lose it. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. After this, we get our final match, the main event. It is Triple Threat Barbed Wire Massacre. Moose versus Steve Macklin versus Sammy Callahan. And it is uh, not exploding barbed wire. No. No, it is not. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, so... Um, they all come out. Uh, Macklin has his face paint on, and as commentary points out, the old, last time he had the face paint on was another triple threat match in this very build. I think they said in this very building uh, between him, Chris Sabin, and Jay White, which he won. And I was like, "Oh shit, Macklin gonna win." Oh, um, the Finn Balor. Yeah, <laughs> it's the demon, yeah, the demon right. Steve, demon Steve. <laughs> we need a demon demon on a pole match between Crazy Steve and Steve Macklin. Yeah, book it. Um, this is a really fun match. Um, if you're not into hardcore stuff, um, 
I guess it's not for you. Yeah, but... this one <laughs> of um, well, I would say the latter match was last week or yesterday's episode of Impact, where that one was like, oh, it's a stipulation match, but not really a spot fest. This was a spot fest. Yes, and that's what you know. That's what these matches are usually all about. So yeah, um, Moose is the commentary pointed this out pretty early on. Moose has kind of evolved from you know he's the wrestling god. He's just like uh, all about like wrestling. To he does have this side of just wanting to kill people, um, and he's kind of basically with Sammy. He's kind of brought that out a lot. Um, and he's, he really excels in these types of matches. Um, Macklin, we've seen him and, uh, and Sammy can go pretty far out there with their, their wrestling and their, uh, no DQ match, uh, from emergence and Sammy is, you know, it's kind of, that's his gimmick is yeah he's the death match guy. Um, but I thought those were really good match. Um, I thought this was a really strong way to end the show. Yeah, Macklin um, got open pretty early on, right? Yeah, Macklin got busted open pretty quickly. It started leaking pretty slowly, and then he just kept on getting hit in the face with things, and he yeah. was just gushing. And by the end of the mass, at the end of the match, his entire face paint was gone, and it was just his face was just red. Yeah, <laughs> like that's all it was. Yeah, I guess the uh, the. Nintendo 64 controller, you know, covered in barbed wire did not help his case. Yeah, no, I think that's probably what took off the rest of the th- the mask that was there. All the puns by commentary. Oh, not- my gosh. You're never going to think of a joystick the same way again. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Sammy was dressed as uh, Cactus Jack for this. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, there, there wasn't too many like weird foreign objects that were like, oh, that's something weird that's wrapped in a, in barbed wire other than we had, we had the, the Nintendo 64 controller. Uh, we had a rolling pin, which Moose was obsessed with. Uh, he took it out, he rolled it up and down Macklin's face for a while. And then he just started playing with it in the corner for a bit for the camera, which was weird. Um, <laughs> there were the wet floor signs uh, yes. wrapped in barbed wire, which commentary said, uh, that's not water, uh, or that's not a bucket of water or a mop on that sign. That's barbed wire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I hope it's not water. Yeah. <laughs> um, there were some doors with barbed wire. There are tables and chairs with barbed wire, as expected. Um, per, the first move of the match was <laughs> Moose, uh, running into or uh, running into Macklin or throwing Macklin into a door, uh, and then bouncing off of it, uh, and Moose hit getting hit by the uh, cactus driver from uh, Sammy, and Tom Trevor was like, "This match could be over in seconds." And I was like, "Bro, if if this match ended off that." I think the crowd would have rioted. Oh, yeah. You know, the, 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 the setup of the ring would have taken longer. Yeah, that was very <laughs> uh, But yeah, it was a very good match. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I think this was a, another star making performance for Macklin. Um, another huge triple threat win. Yeah, and then very intentionally done being right before Bound for Glory with yes. Eddie Edwards versus, you know, Josh Alexander's the match, the main event that's happening. So. Yeah, um, I think if my guess is there's going to be a call your shot gauntlet on this card as there normally is, and I think the shoe in to win it is Steve Macklin. I think Macklin winning it uh, and going after Josh or Eddie doesn't matter either or. He's got stories with both he can do, and he seems like he could kind of do a tweener role at this point. Yeah, because the crowd is really all in. Yeah, uh, and it clearly seems like Impact Management is all in with him. Yeah, a lot has changed in the year where he was like kind of like beating up X Division stars, and we were like, "But this is kind of weird. What is he doing?" To now, he is uh, a legit world title contender in our eyes. Yeah, uh, he, again, when he first signed, I don't think any of us were excited for it. We were like, 
why is one of the Forgotten Sons from WWE showing up here? Uh, he's a tag team guy. He was in NXT for a while as a tag team guy. Uh, why, like, is, he, he didn't impress. I, I can't remember a good Steve Macklin match. Uh, to now, he's like it's a part of the show that we want to watch every week. Yeah, uh, he's a good character. Uh, he's a good wrestler, and in the span of a year, he is he's had two really big triple threat wins, uh, where he has beaten Chris Sabin and Jay White, and in another one, it has been Moose and Sammy Callahan. So I think he I think he definitely benefits with Morrissey not being in the picture of Impact. Yes. Anymore. Because they were 100%. like kind of in similar phases too of their career, both in like trying to revitalize themselves and both being like monster heels. So like, it's a good spot for them now. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And yeah, I, I just think I think there's more of a ceiling for Macklin at this point as well. Uh, oh, yeah. He's he's much more well rounded. He still I still don't think he's like the the greatest promo, but it doesn't matter because his actions speak louder than his words. So. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, Victory Road, give it another thumbs up. Yeah, it was a solid show. I definitely liked it. Um, you know, nice Impact Plus show. Again, leading into what will be Bound for Glory in the next couple weeks. Yeah, uh, Impact or Impact also during the show revealed like some more shows that they're doing for the rest of the year. Um, the 25th of November, which is Black Friday. Uh, they are doing uh, another episode of the Impact Provisional Wrestling Federation, which is their uh, throwback uh, throwback shows that they do. So it seems like they're doing another one of those for uh, a November show. Uh, that's a Friday. So I guess thank- the night after Thanksgiving, you'll get uh, that will be the November uh, Impact Plus show, I'd right. assume. Um, or it's going to just be taped differently and they'll throw it on randomly in December when like they take like two weeks off at the end of December. Um, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, um, overall good two days of impact. Um, and yeah, um, have anything else to add Angelo? You know what? I don't think so. Um, oh, man. Any, any, uh, any Impact stars making making waves elsewhere in the world of wrestling right now? I don't... I, I, I don't believe so. I mean, yeah, Matt we already, Cardona... We already, we oh, already I guess... We, more <laughs> season AEW. I was going to say, we haven't talked about the PWI. <laughs> oh. And how Josh Alexander is listed lower than Matt Cardona, I believe. Yeah, okay. That, that's. <laughs> I, I guess we can, we can end it. That... <laughs> It is a little silly. Yes. Very silly. I yes. mean, you have a guy that, you know, basically is the face of Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Super protected. Was the X Division champion beat? Uh... Yeah, right. He was the X Division, so the PWI would be August to August, basically. August to July. So no, right it, no, it's July to July to July. It's July to July? Okay, so yeah, yeah. July 1st, then 2021... Yeah, or even if it was the end of July, whatever it was, he was exhibition champ. He on a, on a roll, on a roll, cashes in, wins at Bound for Glory against Christian, then loses to Moose, and then had a couple months where he was cold. But yes. then, all all worth it in the end because he wins the title back, and is on a tear. And he was on a tear before he won the title back. Anyway, yes. Um, versus Matt Cardona, who's been a super belt collector. Of like smaller belts, you know, that was the GCW title in that range. I don't, I don't think, think so. I think that was, was the. I think that was the spring of 2021. Right, right. So he, you know, Moxley's for, had it forever at this point. Right, and then so from an impact perspective, he lost to Moose, mm-hmm. you know, and Morrissey. Like he, he wasn't. He was. He was doing fine. He was definitely in a spot better than he was normally in his career. And I'm a. I, I'm a big Cardona fan. I think actually for the Meteor Rewards, I, th- I think I said he was like he's been my favorite, you know, wrestler in Impact. Yes. But in terms of putting him as a you know better year than Josh Alexander, that's tough to say. That's, yeah. I, I would I would not agree with that because yeah. Josh Alexander's been your champ. So. Yeah. Um, where was it? 2020 into 2021, Rich Swan 
was actually in the top 10 for yes. his impact title run. So that, that one was a little weird to leave Josh Alexander out. Maybe it was just, you know, first, this is really like one year after COVID really affected everything. The, the landscape of wrestling has gotten stronger. New Japan has been like, you know, hitting harder than it was in 2020. So it could be some factors why Josh Alexander didn't make the top 10. But yeah, if, if you had to swap someone, I would, I would swap the places between Cardona and Josh Alexander, definitely. Yeah, um, I'm just looking. Ace Austin was number 33. Mike Bailey at 30. Uh, I I feel like Mike Bailey should be higher just because he's everywhere and he's booked he, strong. Yeah, everywhere. he is everywhere now, but that's pretty high. I mean, for yeah. like he's everywhere that isn't AEW or WWE. So that's yeah, they're, fair. They're, uh, Moose is 21. Um, okay. Yeah, because he was he was champ. Yeah, right? he was champ. Yeah. Um, just. Going down the list for the next impact per Trey Miguel is 49. Yeah, I mean, it's the value of the X Division title. Yeah. Um, and then Laredo Kid at 66. Uh, Alex Shelley at 70. Yeah, which Laredo Kid at 66 is interesting because it's like nothing in impact <laughs> really yeah. that good. Like he's, he's a good talent, obviously, but he doesn't win. Yeah, he just doesn't win on impact, so it's that's that's definitely just based on his other work elsewhere. Yeah, Jordan Grace at ninety seven. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Masha Slamovich at one hundred and ten, and Ali Catch at one hundred and eleven. So it's battle for one hundred and tenth place. That's how I'm saying it. And Nick Nick Gage at one hundred and twelve. There you go. That's the death match range. Gage, yeah. (laughs) They should have had Masha versus Nick Gage. Yeah, I'm just like looking at this. I cannot see Chris Bay is at 133. I still don't see Chris Saban. That's interesting because he had a pretty solid year as a singles wrestler. Yeah, unless I've like missed maybe, him maybe. pretty early on, but like I feel like Chris Saban had a bigger year than uh, than uh, what's his name uh, than Ace Austin or Ace Austin did. I guess yeah, he had the best of Super Juniors run. Yeah. Uh, but Al- definitely better than Alex Shelley, in my opinion. Um, right, right, I agree. Like, yeah, so weird. Uh, maybe because maybe Shelley does more on the Indies, but like, is he booked well on the Indies? I don't know. Yeah, I think he is. I think okay. he usually, like like he has wins over Danny Garcia and stuff. Okay, that then that makes a little bit more sense. Because, yeah, I, I'm in the 160s at this point and still no Chris Saban. Um, but W. Morrissey is at 172. So Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, just, like, interesting like, again, stuff. He, like, he, he ascended his star so much, yes. you know, that last year. And it was, I think, beyond just his win-loss record for the PWI. Like, he looks like a superstar that can make a lot of money in this industry going yeah. forward. So I Chris Saban, that. 202. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, right. Right below. He's right below Bobby Fish and T Hawk, and right above Luchasaurus and Dark Sheik of GCW. Dark Sheik. That's pretty. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting place. Oh, I, we forgot to say the big debut that happened on the show. Did we? Bobby Fish. Bobby Fish showed up. Oh, we kind of skipped right over there. Yeah. Yeah. That that is that's that's a new impact guy, even though he came in and said he wasn't signed. Yeah. Um, And that that he's not controversial. No, like, announcement beforehand that Bobby Fish is going to show up, right? No. No, Bobby Fish. So, Bobby Fish's whole. The the big Bobby Fish story has been that he's been basically petitioning to go to WWE again. Because, as he put it, he would go to war for Triple H. He would run through brick walls for Triple H if Triple H said so. Um, and then Wrestling Observer pointed out that uh, either yesterday or today that <laughs> according to their source in AEW, Bobby Fish had been trying to get people to leave AEW to go back to WWE with him, uh, including Kyle O'Reilly and Alec, uh, Adam Cole, both of which said no that they were comfortable in AEW and really liked what they were doing there. Bobby Fish left. Seemed like, okay, well, maybe he's going back to the WWE. Nope, he's an impact. So, <laughs> I feel like his power play left. 
definitely. I mean, like, he, he his power play was that the whole team, the trio of them. Yes. So, him on his own, an impact. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it was weird because, like, I, I've never personally like held a lot of value to him. No, like, he, he's like, good in well, ring, but he gets injured ring. all the time. Yeah, right. And he's kind of getting older, so he's kind of yeah. at that stage where it's hard to keep up, keep up. But yeah, very good in ring talent. Um, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. So so today at the pay per view, he beat up Raj Singh and Shira a little bit. Yeah. So and said he didn't know who the heck they were. So. Yeah. Um, I. I don't know. Is he an X division guy? I'd say so. But if he's yeah. messing with Shira and Raj Singh, it seems like he'd be like a heavyweight guy. <laughs> Which I, I just can't see him as that. You know, the, I mean, like he's he's built like Josh Alexander, so he can kind of fit anywhere. Yeah. Um. But yeah, with with his, you know, he's not a, a spring chicken totally. So it's I, I can't imagine he's like a long term project. But um, he should be exciting. Maybe leading into Bound for Glory, or maybe like for a few months after. We'll see. Yeah. Where he fits in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's our impact show. Very long, but hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back maybe next week. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, and we're on the road to Bound for Glory. Our yeah. two-week road. <laughs> two-week road, yep. Victory road to Bound for Glory. Yeah. Road. Good stuff. All right, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye.